Hi everyone, I'm a third gen faggot. I'm going to commentate on Joshua8428 and his gay video of gayness that is really gay. I mean, this video is so gay that it makes gay people even gayer than they already are. I'll show you what true commentating really is. Hello, YouTubers. This is Joshua here, 428 speaking. Wow, your voice is really gay. I mean, how gay can one girl's voice be? I can't even believe you are a girl. What video are you going to be commentating on? I bet it's something that's cooler than your feet. Today's commentary will be commentating on how she rises again. Shut the fuck up! You're a stupid recolor faggot who makes jokes about my little pony and 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 you're stupid. Xanthar making a commentary. I think you guys get the drill and all that, but those who don't, please take a look at my Zelda manga commentary introduction. Yeah, it was really stupid and gay and stuff and um And stupid. Okay, let's dive in. As the Lynx head east, they take it upon themselves to rest, train, and improve their skills. That's a good idea. They're gonna need to prepare themselves for what lies ahead. Just Thanks, Nostalgia Crit. God, you know what? Forget it. I cannot do this. Sorry, guys. I was going to make a video in the form of a third gen faggot, or at least as close as I could get. But sadly, I have a functioning brain that won't allow me to do this. So back to the normal professor. And if you made it this far, then I commend you. While Blue and Green are sparring, Vio notes that an effective way of collecting force is to find condensed forms called force gems. But finding the gems will be a demanding task since they can only be found in certain places. Blue, impatient kid that he is, wants to get back at Shadow Link for everything that happened at Hyrule Castle. But Red and Green understand that they have to risk taking their time to find the gems if it means fully restoring the Four Sword. Unbeknownst to the four heroes, Shadow Link knows exactly where they're headed, and sends a tiny eyeball creature to keep watch over them for him. Keep an eye on him, slave. We need to make sure that everything goes according to plan. <laughs> hey Joshua, you know what this black piece of shit does for the video? It takes away from how good the retrospective actually is. You say you are wanting to inspire Danny, or whatever, well, I'm afraid if you keep doing this stupid shit, you're going to do nothing more than probably make her wish she never started the series in the first place. Their destination? The Village of the Blue Maiden. The scene switches over to a little girl, bidding farewell to her doll, but then she overhears a commotion outside of her home. The adults of the village are on the verge of rioting, and before she could get swept into the brawl, the four Lynx appear, shielding her and pushing them away. They chastise the adults for acting like children, which as it turns out is exactly why the village is on the verge of chaos. The little girl introduces herself as a rune, and her first impression of the Lynx is that they are quadruplets. And it's quite understandable. After all, they do look exactly alike. Size from clothes. Hey everyone, guess what? The Master of Obvious strikes again! Joshua, it's not necessary to point out that quadruplets look the same, since that is 
common knowledge, you waste of oxygen. But really, is anyone even surprised that he's still pointing out the obvious? Which they immediately deny. Arun explains that a storm came through the village 10 days ago, taking 18 children with it. The parents have not had any luck in trying to locate them. But Arun has noticed a shadow that looks exactly like one of her missing friends. The four decide that they will solve this mystery, believing Vati to be behind it since he had taken maidens in the past. And seeing as Arun is the only child left in the village, surely he will come for her. That night, Red, Blue, and Vio discuss their mission when Blue senses something and jumps to the defensive. Only to find a rock in his bed. Meanwhile, Green finds a rune outside with her doll. She tells him- What? No stupid joke about this being a rocky situation? You really disappoint me, Joshua. You really do. Green picks up on her hesitation, realizing that Rosie means a lot to her, and says that she shouldn't be so quick to throw her away. And then Blue appears to drag Green away for sneaking off, as he puts it. Will this kid ever learn to stop being so brash? Will you ever learn that you have no idea what a, quote, real commentary is, unquote, and leave YouTube? Your Let's Plays are crap as well, by the way. Once Arun is alone, Rosie suddenly speaks, promising to take her to a place where children can play forever. Come with me, come with me, come with me, come with me, to the places, 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 where we can play, 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 forever, forever. Why did you think that this was necessary? That was horrendous! Hey everyone, wanna make your video shit in an instant? Well call 1-800-DUMBASS and Shadwick the Hedgehog will make your dreams come true. The Lynx overhear the commotion and find that Arun is gone. Only her shadow remains. Suddenly, the rocky eye creature appears behind Green, bringing reinforcements to taunt him and corner him before wrapping him in a strange light. Green awakens to find Red, Blue, and Vio with him, but the village looks warped and nightmarish. They notice some figures in the distance, but only find toys when they catch up to them. The toys talk about how they're in a world where there are no adults, no rules, no work, where they will never tire or grow hungry. A place where children can play and have fun all they want for eternity. In this world, all of the captured children have become toys themselves. The Lynx then come face to face with the being that brought them here. The stone monster Argus. The creature summons the army of tiny rock eyes, using them to beat the Lynx back from attacking it directly. Green orders the others to attack the smaller eyes by using some of the toys against them. And here we get to see some of the more typical Zelda items that we get in the games. Green takes the boomerang, Vio takes the bow and arrows, Red takes the slingshot, and Blue takes the hammer. When they kill the eye creatures, they feel the four sword gaining power, and they see this as the perfect opportunity to collect force. Soon only Argus remains, who begins to cry all over Red, mourning the loss of its children. Its tears harden and trap Red into the ground, and then Argus tries to crush him. Vio saves Red by blinding the beast, and leaving it wide open for Blue to smash it into bits. Argus's remains reveal Force Gems, which Blue fights the others over since he was the one that technically slayed it. He does have a point. No, Joshua, technically, he does not. If Vio had not blinded the damn monster, Blue couldn't have made the actual finishing blow. It's called teamwork! Something you don't understand. Blue is being nothing more than a selfish, egotistical prick. Which kind of reminds me of a certain blue recolor out there that we all know. With the four swords stronger, the Lynx take this opportunity to go to the Eastern Temple outside of town and free the Yellow Maiden. She rewards them with a magical item called the Moon Pearl, which she says can aid them in their quest by opening a gate to the Dark World. The Lynx return to the village and find that all the children have returned, including Arun. She bids them farewell and asks that they don't fight with each other anymore. And Chapter 3 ends with Blue, Red, and Vio pulling Green into another petty squabble right in front of her. Yeah, there's not much to talk about with this chapter, other than that with the exception of Arun and her little subplot, this is probably the one chapter that follows the events of Four Swords Adventures the closest. 
In the game, the children are taken to the dark world. You have to complete tasks to save them. You then head over to the Eastern Temple, defeat Argus, and save the Yellow Maiden. Enjoy it while you can, because the next time we meet, this story is going to go in a completely different direction for about five chapters. So join me next time for Chapter 4, Links Torn Apart. Well, that's it right here. Keep up the good work, Danny. Without further ado, this is Joshua E428, signing off. Uh, well, I I said all that I really needed to say in the commentary, so I've really got nothing left to say other than Joshua. It is really sad when Supersonic 407 can make a better commentary when he is imitating you. At least his video was, you know, entertaining. You are ruining Danny's hard work. And if she decides it's not worth the effort to make these anymore because of people like you, I might just hurt you. We never know. This is the professor, and I will see you ladies and gents on a later date. Adieu. Class is dismissed. Ugh.